Ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be a bit of a roller coaster of a video, so bear with me for this. Uh, the scene is Nashville, Tennessee, another school shooting uh, at the hands of, well, a mentally ill person. But that's not what the debate is meant to be aimed at. Now, here we have from CTV News even reporting on this, saying the gun control debate in America has been silenced. Complaining that we're not talking about limiting people's uh, access to firearms. The wake of another deadly mass shooting in America. We saw children as young as nine years old shot and killed. The gun control debate is going nowhere. Already in the first quarter, 130 mass shootings have outpaced the 113 similar shootings in the first quarter of 2022. There have been more mass shootings than days so far. Nearly two mass shootings for every day this year. Now, you can skip through all of this. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can read through the article yourself. But they go into their gripes here. So the, their grievance here is, however, in the immediate aftermath of this latest horrific shooting, some lawmakers are focused their efforts on gender of the assailant, who is transgender, rather than engage in concerted efforts to confront the rising death toll. Unfortunately, President Biden's gun activists and others are rendered powerless as blood spills in the streets and weapons are of war are used to cut down innocent men, women, and children. Now, what has changed over this period of time? Has it been the uh, the guns, the availability of guns since the founding of the United States, since Canada has been around? Now, this has been the the question. Uh, what has changed is because. Here's the thing. Guns have been available this entire time. This is a new phenomenon. And, well, some people are quick to point out what exactly has changed. First of all, it should be a metal detector, that's for sure. And it should be uh, someone like me. Joe Biden is retarded, man. Guns just don't go around killing people. We're not talking about the elephant in the room, which is, you know, trans being a mental illness. We enable them. I would definitely say it's a hate crime. They're hating against children, they're hating against Christianity. The guns is not the problem. The mental illness is the problem. How do you mental illness would be the problem. And we look back at just the past few uh, shootings that did occur in uh, the United States in general. Colorado Springs shooter identified as non-binary. Denver shooter identified as trans. Aberdeen shooter identified as trans, the Nashville shooter identified as trans. Now, it, this in itself, I mean, you, you have people that, you know, there's an ideological bend going on here with this trend towards people uh, affirming themselves in this direction. And, well, <laughs> it's hard to, to say that is it's exactly just this to be the problem. It's not just this. There's also the medicating of children, medicating uh, just children's behavior away in, in this sense uh, of just trying to get them to behave in a different way. And then also you add on top of this the gender ideology that's been moving into the school system, the curriculum. And, well, you know, people having access to children online, which uh, has, has definitely been an unprecedented thing. Now, <laughs> many people pointing out online, um, you know, does this look like mental illness to you? And there's many, many instances where it seems that this is becoming more and more of a militant issue. And the the prevailing thing that's being told to these people who suffer from this mental illness is that their livelihoods and their lives are being threatened in, in the wake of people just trying to make sense of this whole situation. And well, what's happening? Militant, militant attitudes have been coming out about this. Uh, people from the so-called trans community saying that they need to defend themselves from this so-called genocide against people just because people don't want their children subjected to adults in their bathrooms or they don't want their children subjected to mature content in, in books, in schools, and whatnot. And it's become very, very militant. People are taking it out largely on people of faith and a particular faith in, in general, and that would be Christianity. And this person, this individual uh, is, is doing just that. If you read 
the the <laughs> I'm not reading this out loud. You can pause the video and have a look at what it has to say here. But just before the shooting that took place in Nashville, Tennessee, this video uh, made it out to the, the mainstream and was all over TikTok and the uh, the the community in which is is being discussed at the moment. And this is this is the the rhetoric that has been seen online uh, when it comes to this community. Time to fight. God, all of you, I'm disappointed. Fight! Stop! If the, I'll tell you something. If a police officer put his hands on me for trying to be who I am, I don't care if I got shot. I'm taking a couple of transphobes with me. And I suggest you do the same. The time for debate is over. It's a waste of time! So we're in a situation where anybody who is against you, what you have to say is phobic. Uh, just because somebody disagrees with you doesn't mean that they're threatening you. But this is this is the rhetoric that's coming out of these communities. And, well, this is what you're seeing out there, trans rights or else. And this is a popular slogan that's being seen uh, throughout a lot of these protests. And well, you know what? It's available on Amazon. And Amazon is not censoring this kind of thing. And this is a, a, an open ar a call to arms. This is an open call to violence. And well, what happens when you have open calls to violence? Well, this kind of thing. And especially when you apologize for this type of behavior. Now, this is from uh, Jack Sobic. He, he published this on Twitter saying the Trans Resistance Network, which is a, a, evidently a, a, an actual organization, has released a statement on Audrey Hale, the real saying that there are that this person is the real victim of the Christian school shooting. Trans Resistance Network published a statement on March 27th, 2023, uh, saying the Trans Resistance Network has been notified. The shooter involved in today's church school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, was a person identifying as transgender, known from online profiles as Aiden or Aubrey Hale with the he, him, uh, pronouns. Well, it's not our policy to engage in public with news media. We believe that this moment calls for thoughtful response from our collective. Uh, interesting language chosen there. We point out that today's innocent uh, this this today's incident in Nashville, Tennessee, is not one tragedy, but two. They claim the first tragedy today is the loss of life of the children and adults. We extend our deepest sympathies and heartfelt prayers for those um, families dealing with the loss of the loved ones. There is nothing we can offer uh, that will comfort or the hurt or ease the sorrow we mourn with you. The second and more complex tragedy that is that Aiden or Aubrey Hale, who felt he had no other effective way uh, to be seen than to lash out by taking the life of others and by consequence himself. Now, this if this reads a lot like a, a, a person who would apologize for someone who committed a heinous crime, this is what you're hearing here. We do not claim to know the individual or have access to their inner thoughts or feelings. We do, but but of course, they're, they're lending to the aid. Now, I'll leave a link in the description, of course, as always, so you can read this for yourself. Uh, but it's it's basically just saying that the 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 idea that uh, this person lashed out because of the societal norms being so against a person with their own chosen identity, um, and well, they had to do this, and it's it's a tragedy that the the police had to take this person out in the in the pursuit of lashing out against um, well a Christian school that had no other aims but to teach this person how to um, you know read and write and possibly have some sort of morals. We remind the news media to respect the self-identified pronouns of transgendered individuals who come across your desk. Hayden Hale self-identified with he, him pronouns on forward-facing sites. We also <clears throat> urge you to avoid uh, pandering to those individuals on human, or, or sorry, on the right, who use the double tragedy to uh, foment fear, atonement, uh, what? Sorry, I think that's a, a typo. Uh, fear and terror of transgender people in order to advance a political agenda of transgender elimination based on 
uh, biased and sensational uh, coverage of these viewpoints is both irresponsible and reprehensible. Um, yeah, so it, it, a lot of people are actually convinced that people are out to get them for their uh, their ideology. Now, in in real time and in actual in actuality, people don't really care how uh, adults want to identify uh, themselves. The, the The real issue here for a lot of people is is pushing this ideology on children, and this is uh, this is of course heinous. Now, the 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 LGB community, the lesbian, bisexual, and gay community, is lashing out at at this in 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 general, and they're they're coming up with their own slogans uh, with uh, groups such as uh, Gays Against Groomers. And a number of other organizations, and they've been all over social media saying that this this is not what they they identify with, and they're they're claiming that this the the TQ plus community, so anybody ab above and beyond the LGB in the in the acronym uh, doesn't belong in their group. They they don't identify with them. They they're working on the rights of gay people and lesbian people to just be uh, as adults. Um, and well, here it is, you know, it is the slippery slope. It'll never happen. 1995, uh, people said love is love. We just want to be accepted. We just want acceptance. 2005, we just want equality. Then things took a shift around 2012. Bake the cake or go to court. That's not right. Then 2015, say my pronouns or lose your job. 2023, the kids will watch drag shows. And they're saying we are not the same. Uh, there's all kinds of of uh, more slogans coming from the LGB community now saying get your stuff off of our flag mutilating minors and erasing women destroying female uh, sports wasn't part of the deal and they're trying to make a clean break now from these uh, this community even comparing uh, the 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 T plus community as being part of the the like the cultural revolution that took place in China all those years ago, saying uh, the Y may be silent uh, in tranny. Here you have the the Y chromosome in there, uh, making it tyranny, uh, but it's still there. So this is um, this is coming from CTV News. Gender affirming care bans expanding accessing uh, or access being cut US laws now targeting transgender adults um, and of course this is this is again more more of the news media coming to the aid of people uh, that, that just want to cut this stuff from their children's curriculum within the last few years hundreds of bills have been introduced in the US with the aim of stripping away restricting or even criminalizing gender affirming care for transgender youth under 18 years of age so this is the main the main crux of it it's it's people people who are under age should not be subjected to this type of stuff and here's from city tv news protesters clash in surrey over soji what they're calling it now these 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 acronyms are make things sound so much nicer when we get into that in bc schools supporters and opponents of sexual orientation and gender ideology otherwise known as soji most people just call it gender ideology sexual orientation uh, resources in Bishi schools clash on Saturday. Protesters who are part of the Freedom Party of British Columbia gathering or gathered and held signs saying children belong to parents, not to governments, and no no to sexualization of children in public schools. Now, this would be hard to argue against, but this is the fact of the matter. People are actually arguing against this. They want to bring sexualization, uh, sexual content into schools. Now, if you were to uh, distribute any of this type of information on a public street to children, to minors, um, you would be arrested especially some of the books that are being sold, uh, being distributed in these schools. Now, here's Derek Smith tweeting out some things here. Uh, Derek Smith is a known friend of the channel here. He's also running for mayor of Calgary in the next uh, mayoral election. But in, in one of his, his main points is get this stuff out of schools. Children should not be subjected to this. Now, it's okay for people who are adults to engage in whatever thing that they want to do uh, when it comes to sexual orientation and all of that stuff. 
that is not being contested here. What's being contested is what children are being subjected to in schools. And again, this type of material, if you were to walk down the street and hand this to a minor on the street, you could be convicted of a felony offense. <laughs> like this is this is what we're getting at here. And uh, no, but this is being uh, given to children in schools. Now, Dean Dre Humphrey of Rebel News here has been uh, has been reporting on this as well. A couple examples of school literature available for kids in Chilliwack School District 33 of which I've, I've brought up on the channel as well before. Now, I'm not going to read this out loud. I, I can't read this out loud. Um, YouTube won't allow that. But you can pause the screen and you can get a, a little glimpse of what they're actually giving to children in schools in Chilliwack, British Columbia. This is getting so much closer, so much closer to home. Now, the question is, is there discrimination actually happening in North America? Are people being discriminated against? Well, it seems that that, that is on the rise. The True North article here states that hate crimes against Canadian Catholics on the rise. A recent published report found that hate crimes against Catholics have more than tripled in Canada since 2020. And in March, in a March 16th communique entitled Toward a hopeful future facing down religious hate, the Christian think tank Cordis reported that hate crimes against Catholics have seen the largest spike relative to previous years, jumping from 43 known instances in 2020 to 155 instances in 2021. Again, links in the description, check them out. The Cardis report noted that religious-based discrimination against Catholics follows a general upward trend of hate crimes against all faith denominations. In 2001, or 2021, a total of 900 hate crime incidents were reported against religious communities, reaching their highest point since 415 in, 20, in 2009 the year when comparable data was made available. The think tank attributed this rise of religious hate crimes to a backdrop of increasingly negative public attitudes towards the contributions of religious religion and faith communities in Canada. In collaboration with the Angus Reid Institute, Chorus Acardis uh, conducted polling, which found that those who identify as non-religious observe religion in generally as damaging to public life. Now, where is a lot of this uh, rhetoric coming from? It's it's uh, unusual, and it's in high frequency. Here is uh, Jane Fonda on The View Jane's of all places on national television in the United States. Well, uh, just, just let her words speak for themselves. We have experienced many decades now of having agency over our body, of being able to determine when and how many children to have. We know what that feels like. We know what that's done for our lives. We're not going back. I don't care what the laws are. We're not going back. Yeah. Not. I think the women will rise up. That's the activist. That's Jane speaking, yeah. and, and 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 she probably will get a Nobel Prize. But it's very, the truth. Very, very soon. It, it is the truth. But we're I, not going to do it. Besides, I, besides marching and, and protesting, what else do you suggest? Well, well it doesn't happen murder. overnight. It's not a miraculous. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> murder. <laughs> She's kidding. Wait a second. She's just now, kidding. Don't say that. That's oh, not... you don't know. They'll pick up on that and yeah, just run that's with the it. Worst. She's Joking. just kidding. It's well, well let pick me up on that. Let's move on and talk about Jane's activism, which is yeah. legendary. It is legendary. That's some legendary activism right there. But this is this is this is the reality of the situation. Like I said, this is a bit of a roller coaster of a video today. Uh, but I just wanted to get this this information out there, and we'll see how many how many click on it because of the length of the video going in on twenty minutes. But uh, yeah, of course, trying to get this information out there. Open open the door for debate and show that <laughs> mental illness is is a real issue in, in our Western world today. And uh, unless we address it by, I guess, pushing, pushing this in a direction at uh, going after the tools 
that uh, an assailant uses rather than um, the the reason or the ideology that brought them into uh, into performing these things or doing committing these acts uh, is a real disservice to uh, even the energy put into trying to uh, alleviate these things from happening or eliminate these things from happening in the future. Again, nobody is after grown adults doing what they wish to do in the privacy of their own homes. People are really just going after um, the people who are trying to indoctrinate children. Anyways, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. We'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.